Okay, here we go, round three. If you missed my first two videos, I've already talked about the first two times Steve Spagnolo went up against Tom Brady uh, in the Super Bowl. Those were the first two times he was with the Giants, so obviously he's trying to go 3-0 and here against Brady. We don't have the Super Bowl game to talk about because it hasn't happened yet, but we can at least talk about what happened, you know, the first time these two teams played each other and sort of talk about how that could impact Super Bowl 55. So first, let's talk about deep shots. You know, one of the things I've, I talked about a lot in that first video was Brady took some deep shots and wasn't really able to hit them. And early on in this game, it was really no different. I mean, this is one safety deep. Mike Evans with a one-on-one -on -one matchup against Brashad Breland. You would think that's a good matchup for the Bucs, and that's something that Brady and the Buccaneers would want to take. And logically, that does make sense. This is something that you don't see too often, only one safety deep. But when you do see it, you want to take that opportunity. However, since there's a blitz, Brady's going to get pressured. He gets hit as he's thrown. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm not sure if that's, it's still not a bad throw. Evans wasn't able to make the grab. That's the one he usually does make. Didn't make it that time. So that's obviously partially a problem. Later on in the game, this play would happen, where it's, again, the same thing. But, and again, they're trying to pick on Brashad Breland here, which is a mistake. Breland's a really good corner. And the guy they're doing it with is Scotty Miller, who, uh, you know, good deep threat. So I kind of get the logic here. Obviously, there's a mismatch in terms of overall talent. But Miller's pretty good at this deep stuff. So it makes some sense to try and do it. But again, what you're going to see is pressure. Like, watch. Uh, there's a missed blitz pickup by Ronald Jones. Brady's hit as he's thrown. Ball is nowhere near as far as he wants to make it. And it's intercepted. And that's just one of those things, I think, for, for Brady and for this Bucks offense heading into Super Bowl 55. This is a defense that you think you have opportunities to take deep shots on, but you don't always, it's not always that easy. Part of the Spagnolo system is that when he has one safety deep, he's usually using the other guy to blitz, not to cover over the middle of the field or to double team anybody or anything like that. However, remember that play I showed in the first time these two guys played in the Super Bowl or Spagnolo coached and Brady played uh, in 2007, the undefeated year where Brady missed that throw to Randy Moss. Well, they're going to try a very similar idea here on this one. It's a cover two man play. And Mike Evans now is, listen, he's not Randy Moss, but he obviously is still a very good deep threat. And he's going to be running deep towards the sideline. And that's where Brady's going to look to throw. And as I talked about, these plays can work against Spagnolo's cover two better than other teams' cover two because in Spagnolo's cover two, the safeties stay a lot closer to the middle of the field and a lot further in, so deep shots can work better against this coverage, whereas in some cover twos, they're useless. A couple key things to notice, though, before I show this play. For one thing, they're doubling Godwin here. It's only going to be a three-man rush, and Godwin is getting doubled here, so that's interesting for sure. Another interesting thing to point out, this is a, a fourth down and three, which is probably why Godwin is getting that just straight up double team right here. Uh, and, you know, they're keeping an extra eye on Antonio Brown as well and not focusing as much to Mike Evans. And, and I think it's just simply because Evans is more of a deep guy. You're not too concerned about the deep play. I mean, you are to some degree, but you really just want to get off the field here. But watch how Evan gets towards the sideline, which makes the safety not realize quick enough that he's running a deep route. And by the time uh, the realization is made, finally, Brady is able to hit a deep shot against the Spagnolo defense. It seemingly took forever, and it took a really good route from Mike Evans to make it work, but they're finally able to do it. And so it's difficult. I'm not going to argue against that. It is difficult, but it can be done. And if you can make it happen, well, Obviously, making it work once is worth five times of it not working out. So I think that Tampa Bay will and should take those opportunities. Also, this play is, I can't believe this happened. I, this is something that shocked me when I went back and watched the tape. Not of this game, but if you watch my second video, go back and watch it because, you know, uh, these are all kind of blending together. Look at what happens in this in this play. I can't believe this. We're in that second video, Aaron Hernandez, he was doing a great job against the Giants defense, but he was doing much better against linebackers than he was against safeties. And so one of the things they did was to get Aaron Hernandez on a linebacker. They had him line up as a halfback to get that matchup, and they actually got a key third down conversion uh, with that exact format. Well, now what they're doing is they have Antonio Brown there, which I can't believe and I was thinking about this and thinking, are these related or is it an unbelievable coincidence? 
I think it's related because if you remember, this was one of the games that Bruce Arians really let Brady kind of control a lot of the playbook. And I can't imagine this is a coincidence and he just simply forgot a key play in one of his Super Bowls against this defensive coordinator. So I wouldn't be shocked whatsoever if we see Antonio Brown lined up as a back again. And especially just to add to the, you know, the reason why I do believe that this is the same uh, Antonio Brown and the Bucks. this is a third down and three. Exact same situation that Hernandez converted on. So, uh, you know, uh, I think that that's pretty interesting, although this time doesn't work out as well. Kansas City does have a safety covering Brown, which makes sense. You're not going to have a linebacker cover him, but at least you don't have a, a corner covering him. But uh, pressure came too quickly. Tampa Bay could not pick up a blitz. And so kind of all ended up not really mattering. That's one of those things where I feel like, you know, I watch all this film. I find it incredibly interesting and fun. I'm sure some people are going to say, well, who cares? But I don't know. It, it's fun to me. Also, remember my first video when I talked a lot about how Spagnolo likes to rotate his coverages, get the coverage different? If you look right here, I'm just going to show this where you kind of aren't exactly sure who's supposed to cover what. You're not exactly sure what coverage this is. It's a good disguise. I mean, you, it kind of looks like there's one safety deep. It could be a cover two, but it looks like it might just be a, a cover three. Again, difficult to tell exactly. It is going to be a cover two zone, though. So that's what Tampa Bay and the Buccaneers are going to be doing, uh, going to be going up against. Despite the fact that, I mean, if you look right here, the safety deep, he's very deep. And against cover three, Rob Gronkowski's route doesn't work as well as it does against cover two. Also worth noting, this is a zone blitz. So... A lot of interesting stuff going on here from Spagnolo. But this time, Brady takes the snap despite immediate pressure, makes a beautiful throw, and they get a big completion right there. So I do think that Brady is probably more well equipped to beat Spagnolo this time than the first two times, which again, not exactly a hot take. Uh, Brady was a young 34 year old man the last time they played nine years ago, which is again, Crazy to think that uh, it was nine years ago and he was still 34, which many people would think is towards the end of his career. And we'll end with this play because, again, there really were a lot of parallels between this game and the first two Super Bowls, which was interesting, which, again, it makes sense. Like, I get it. Same quarterback uh, calling a lot of the plays that uh, he knew would work against this defensive coordinator. But this play, again, something we've seen. You have this time Mike Evans run a deep route going over the middle, clearing out the defensive back, covering the flat. You now have a halfback this time. So it's been a wide receiver in the past. This time they're using a back. He's going to run underneath. And Tom Brady, he runs a play action on top of it, but then hits Ronald Jones. Same idea. Jones is now open in open space, and he makes a move, gets a touchdown. Just an incredible play. So yeah, a lot of fun stuff. How much did we learn? I don't know. Uh, I think we learned that Brady does uh, get better at these things as it goes on. You know, he's he's certainly making the reads better. The play calls are better. And I have to imagine a lot of that is Brady, not just Bruce Arians. I do think the more times a quarterback plays a defensive coordinator, I think that's advantage quarterback, not advantage defensive coordinator. And so it's interesting, you know, I, I kind of felt like I was always ready for Brady to go up against one of those guys from the Giants. And I always thought it would be Tom Coughlin or Eli Manning or just the Giants itself. But honestly, Steve Spagnuolo, that's a pretty good trilogy as well. So it's pretty interesting. And it's definitely going to be a very fun game. A lot of NFL history is going to be decided in this one game. It's it's so fascinating. It means so much, and it's very cool to see. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching all of these videos about Spagnolo and about Tom Brady. I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of journey uh, through NFL history. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>